Hey, Doc. Just got an email from a former colleague of mine from the intel community. The specialty is air surveillance. Thought you might want to see this. Came across a pretty incredible video. Taken in 2016, but he just got it. Shot by a guy named Jimmy Chappie, commercial drone operator in Beaver, Utah, which lies directly between Moab and the Nevada Proving Grounds. And the video itself is head scratching, but he attached it for us. Yeah, I'm seeing scrub trees, scrub oak. It's this looks like beautiful landscape to me. Yeah, it's gorgeous. I'm sure if your colleague sent this to you for a reason. Whoa, you see that? Uh huh. Scroll back to that if you can. Here, I'll do it frame by frame. Look at that. Level out. High bank, level out. High speed. And it's gone. Could this be CGI? If it's CGI, it's really good CGI. Right. Well, looking at it in proportion to the trees, it's pretty small, right? It doesn't look like it's impacting the ground in any way. I see no thrust, I see no plume, I see no reaction in the foliage beneath it. Well, except we don't have good distance on this to know exactly how far away this is. We also don't know the size of it. The but deception look at it, it's of not distance. further away here, right? It's clearly moving across. It's moving that way compared to our lens, right? The lens is flattening everything out. There's a lot of information we do not have here, but no sense of propulsion, white, kind of oblong shape. That's looking like the Nimitz report. The drone-captured UFO video bears a striking resemblance to another case of interest in the investigation. <laughs> Look at that. The 2004 USS Nimitz sighting, where one of the ship's fighter jets encountered a strange object in the sky, logged at an estimated speed of 2,400 miles per hour. If anything biological would have been in that thing, it would have turned you into mush. All right, that is very, very strange. If this is not CGI, that looks really, really interesting. Right. Let's send Nick and Sarah to Utah, see if they can find this Jimmy Chappie. I'm hopeful that if there is a video, if it's a good quality and if we can verify it, then that could be major for this investigation. Astrophysicist and space journalist Sarah Crudis and U.S. Marine Intelligence Officer Nick Carnese land in Salt Lake City, Utah, and head to the home of James Chappie, a man who claims he filmed a UFO on his drone camera in 2016. James Chappie captured this encounter on video. I mean, this is huge. We need to learn the details of what he experienced and verify the authenticity. The first thing to do, really, is just to hear this guy out, hear his story. Hey, Good James. Morning. Yeah, hey, I'm Nick. Nick, nice to meet you. Come on in. Thank you. You guys want to just have a seat at the kitchen? Sure. Great. James, thanks for taking the time to talk with us today. Um, we were told that you had an interesting encounter not too long ago, and we're just hoping that you could walk us through it and explain what happened that day. I was out in uh, Beaver, Utah, on October 19, 2016, filming a bunch of B-roll for a documentary. We were done shooting and went back to my hotel room. I dumped all the footage off the cards on, onto my hard drive. And as I was dragging through the clips, I got to this one clip. And uh, as I was fast forwarding through it, I just saw this like weird little blip and it was enough to catch my eye. Just saw this really weird object fly right past the drone and just kind of smoke it right past us. It was, it was going at a high rate of speed. Can we take a look at it? Yeah. Great, I'd be interested to see. Let's pull it up real fast. I'll take you to the clip. I'll let you watch it from there, but this is what I ended up seeing. Whoa. Yeah, pretty crazy. It looks like it just is coming out and it makes a banking turn and it comes right by it. Right. Can we rewind that? Yeah. It's just literally just a split second though. It's traveling so fast. It's just insane, isn't it? You don't think it's possible that this is an optical illusion? I don't. I've seen lens flares. I've seen birds. I've seen bugs. I've seen other drones. I've seen planes. I've seen everything. And to me, like, it was so different. Is there any chance that this was tampered with before you reviewed it? No. I'm the only one that had access to the cards. I would like to know what, what it is, you know? If what I'm looking at is verified to be true, 
then this is pretty major. This is video evidence of something we cannot explain. And if this video is proved to be legit, then this is one of the most significant videos that I've seen in this investigation. Would we be able to get a copy of this from you sure. and have it independently verified? That'd be great. Do, it, do whatever you want. I'd love to hear the results. Before we move forward, this needs to be analyzed by a forensic expert to determine the authenticity. But if it's real, this could be the greatest recording of a UFO ever captured. This video is something which is potentially extraordinary, but we need to verify that using science. Yeah, I mean, it, it's a really compelling video. So hopefully we can verify it. Nick and Sarah arrange a meeting with video forensics expert Michael Primo to confirm the authenticity of a UFO captured on video in 2016. Michael, the uh, camera operator, James, he uh, gave us a copy of, okay. of the video. Well, let's jump right into the preliminary analysis. So if this video has been altered in any way, you're going to be able to determine that. You're going to be able to detect that. Is that yes. right? With forensic accuracy. OK, great. Yeah, as we get over this ridge, it's going to come around and then swoop up past us. OK, let's see what we've got. Oh, wow. There it is. Wow. It's moving at a high rate of speed. I mean, as we track this frame by frame, What's interesting is it maintains a general shape. I would expect to see this a little bit more block-like or larger if someone did manipulate it. Uh, it being a high-definition video, it would take a high level of sophistication and expertise to be able to fake this type of motion blur, to be able to, to blend that and be able to separate that from the clouds. It would take a lot of work to be able to fake something like that. Now that we've had a chance to preliminarily review the video. We can move on to the next step uh, and dig deeper into the digital information testing, phase two. Great. We're going to run the command line code. So we're going to begin parsing that, and that's going to spit out each of the individual frames. Michael runs the video's metadata through a state-of-the-art software program designed to assess if the object is moving in a way consistent with its surroundings. We know today's technology can do so much to manipulate video, so we're not stopping here. We're going to apply the most advanced software to really determine if, in fact, this is an unadulterated video. So it's kind of performing a dissection or surgically pulling every single frame and determining how the pixels are behaving. The software analyzes motion across each frame of video to create a visual map that will show any inconsistencies in the object's movement. Motion vectors are those little arrows. They're going to tell us what that object is going to do in the way that it's predicting its next move. The software assigns vectors, or arrows, to each pixel's movement and direction per frame of video. Now, what's interesting to me is that this point where we can see the object traveling at a high rate of speed. This is essentially the last frame that we can see it. That object is blurred so far based on how fast it's moving. And these motion vectors are still predicting that it's traveling in this direction. There's a lot of detail in this that would be difficult to fabricate and fool the motion vectors into thinking that it's traveling in this direction. So if this video was faked, what would you expect to see these vectors would be a little more sporadic. They wouldn't be so accurate. And the, I would say the slam dunk is that once the object is visually gone, there's still a bit of a motion trail. And can we now rule out the fact that this could have been doctored? Based on the testing that I've performed here, I would be confident in saying that this is an authentic representation of the events as they occurred. Wow. We've now applied multiple tests to this video, and Michael is able to conclude with a high degree of confidence that this hasn't been altered in any way, which now leaves the question, what is it? What are we looking at? Can we do anything here now to better understand what is occurring? Based on where it's coming from, we can estimate the speed that this object travels based on the time that this object is showing on screen. We need to get a rough estimate of what this valley is in a minimum length to generate miles per second. To determine the object's speed, the team maps out its perceived distance traveled from here to that edge, that is two miles. And then divides that by the two second time span the object is visible. And we're looking at, you know, covering a distance of around two miles. 
an on-screen, it was in the frame for two seconds. If an object is traveling one mile per second, that object is traveling 3,600 miles an hour. In layman's terms, that, that thing is cranking. The camera barely caught it. I'm impressed. This may be one of the most compelling videos of a UFO in existence. This whole time, I've been thinking of the Nimitz incident and what Kevin Day described. It's covering two miles in less than two seconds. That is faster than any conventional military aircraft that I'm aware of. Could this be a groundbreaking video of an actual extraterrestrial craft?